Hey, it's Jen, and in today's video, I'm going to show you my process for painting this mixed media postcard. It's one of my favorite projects that I've done recently using watercolors and ink, and I'm excited to share it with you. So this was a super fun project to work on. At the beginning of the year, I moved and started teaching classes and didn't have as much time to work on personal projects like I normally do, and so this was kind of a treat to just sit down and get out the watercolors and my ink and just paint. I started off with a sketch of an anatomical heart that I did in pencil. And then when I was happy with that sketch, I erased a lot of my graphite and my lines. And then I went over my sketch with this masking fluid, which is just one of my favorite techniques. And then I just kind of went ahead and started painting. I was using a, a reference of a galaxy, I think. I think this was actually inspired by some images of space that are in the movie Soul, which if you haven't seen, is totally delightful and I highly recommend it. And so, I've sped up the video obviously because if I didn't then it would be several hours long and that's just far too long for a process video. And so what I've kind of sped through a lot of is the drying time between laying down layers of color. As I'm painting with the watercolors I'm letting each layer dry before I go in with another color. Especially with the complementary colors like I started off with the yellows and the pinks in the middle and then I let that dry completely before putting down the blue so that they wouldn't blend too much or at least I could control the blending by then going over with some just clean water on my brush and blending out edges. So the thing about watercolors is that they definitely fade as they dry and so typically what happens is after I've done one layer I'll go back over and repaint a lot of, especially the darker parts, just to get them more rich in their tones, brighter colors. Watercolor ends up being a lot of layering, which I really like. It gets this sort of gauzy, light, you know, watery <laughs> sort of texture. I like that colors flow into each other. I like that it's sort of easy to move it around even after it's been dried and, and sort of bring it back to life a little bit. And that it's, it's really conducive to messiness. There's different kinds of paints that I think work well with a lot of precision, but watercolor, I, I think you, know, you can get a lot out of, out of being kind of messy. And I'm often pretty messy with my painting, so that works for me. Getting contrast can be a little bit hard with watercolors. So trying to make sure to leave enough of the white or the lighter parts of the paper and working with that to add darker colors into that really helps with contrast. So I'm going over again with another layer to build up some of that contrast by adding some darker darker colors around the edges I especially really want to pull out some darker colors around the masking fluid because when that's pulled off at the end you really want to see that crisp white line left over since that's going to give us the shape of our heart What I like about doing these paintings, especially this mixed media, is that you can really kind of build up the scene slowly. I, I do a lot of mixed media paintings that include a lot of natural elements, so like 
space and I'll have some trees in here a little bit later and and this sort of building up kind of feels a little bit right it might be kind of hokey but walking through the picture or just sort of exploring it and discovering it slowly like you would if you're on a hike through the woods at night which might not be as romantic as I'm imagining it right now but might be pretty magical in my imagination and so with this you know I've started with the watercolors and now I'm gonna add a little bit of sparkle one of my so this whole project is basically like a bunch of my favorite things to do um, splattering paint <laughs> is absolutely one of my absolute favorite things to do so here I have like a special jar of acrylic white acrylic paint that I have just mixed with a lot of water so that it's really loose and I've dipped my tiniest thinnest brush that I have in it and I've just been flicking paint all over it and that's how I make stars I keep that jar of stars with me all the time like it's it's something that I use frequently and so now I'm going over with some black Bombay ink to get some details and plan that I have in my head is to build up layers of trees that sort of go around the edge, the bottom of, of the heart. And so to do that, I've got some, some ink that I've diluted a whole lot. There's a lot of water that went into that ink. And so the first layer of trees that I'm doing are going to eventually be the, the furthest back, furthest away from, if we were looking at this in real life, then maybe the furthest from us. And things that are further away should be generally lighter in this layering technique. You know, if you look at pictures of like far away mountains or far away trees, the ones in the background tend to be lighter, paler in color. So that's what I'm trying to do with this really diluted black ink. And third favorite thing that I'm going to talk about or maybe fourth I don't know this whole this whole project is all just favorites painting trees is absolutely one of my favorite things to do in the whole wide world I think if not for the joy of painting trees I might not seriously pursue being an artist I just love them I just love the way they look and especially the kinds of trees that you get out here in the Pacific Northwest these dug firs these huge evergreens they're my favorite kinds of trees so after that first layer is dried, you can see it's pretty, it's pretty pale, it's pretty light. And so now I'm going over with another layer of ink, and this one is not as diluted. It's still fairly diluted. It's not ink straight from the bottle, but it's going to be a little bit darker. And I'm layering these on top of that previous layer of trees just to give some depth to my painting. Make it look like we're looking out over a large forest in the night. Trees at night, man. I have done so many paintings and drawings of trees at night with a spacey background. I think that's my favorite kinds of composition. Trees at the edge of something, you just see their silhouettes. And this is one more layer of trees and this time I think I am using ink directly from the jar. Just get extra dark black ink here. Bring over some of my bigger trees. You know what I like about trees and about painting trees is that you can get so much expression from them with sort of the random flicks of your brush. And I find that really magical. I also find glittery, shiny ink like this Windsor and Newton Silver pretty magical. And so I just went ahead and dotted a bunch of stars in with that glittery silver ink, which <laughs> you can see. And then this is the ultimate payoff. Ripping the masking fluid off is so satisfying. It's incredible. It, masking fluid is tricky because you really got to make sure to time when you're using it and it has to be removed. You know, even good masking fluid has to be removed within probably 24 hours, any any longer than that, and it can damage your paper and you know, rip 
pieces of painting that you have spent meticulous time splattering all over the place. And so it's really got to be timed just right to be finished with your painting before the massing fluid hardens too much. And there you go. Nice, bright white line. I'm pretty proud of. And this is the Wanderer Heart, so I, I added a little, little message down there. I practiced some different scripts using different writing utensils. And ultimately, I didn't film it, but I ended up with the dip pen and that silver Windsor & Newton ink that I'm using again here to add a few more details. But that was, that was tricky, getting the script to look just right. I think I need, I would like to practice more on making the script look good. This ended up okay. Just adding a few extra stars and sparkly bits just because it's delightful. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with this. I got a couple of stickers printed, and so those were my February Sticker Club stickers on my Patreon, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that process video. If you did, remember to hit like, and if you want to see my videos in the future, please also subscribe. You can also follow the link in the description below to my Patreon page to become a patron and help me decide what my future videos will be about. Uh, happy Black History Month, happy Valentine's Day, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.